Hello, Hello, folks. Welcome to season two, episode three of the Water Boys podcast. It's me, Justin Grant. We're here to talk about some sports. You know. <laughs> first, where do you want to start? Guess we should go with the first round of the NHI, don't you think? Yeah. Oh yeah. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Another first round exit. Grant. They're consistent. Oh. <laughs> you talk about a team who's got consistency. <laughs> you talk about the Leafs. Oh man, that was just disappointing. Oh yeah. You know what? It, I heard a lot of Leafs fans say that third period looked good, but it really didn't. Yeah. They would go in the zone. Fired at the goaltender's chest. He's six seven. Fired off the pads. He's gonna pass off the pads and make him move a little bit. You're not gonna get anything glove side on him. So no. why are you continuing to shoot at the logo? He's just gonna swallow it up. And you see, like John Cooper must have prepared his team for and watched so much video yeah. what the Leafs were gonna do because all they did was clog up the middle. Yes. But they knew the Leafs were a dangling team. They knew they were gonna want to attack Vasilevsky yeah. head on. So what did he do? He put all five guys right in the middle of the ice and they blocked it. Every shot from like out fire or even in tight, they couldn't even get close to him. Yeah. yeah. Leafs gave up so many centerized possession chain uh, interceptions. They would go in, take one shot, and cough up the puck. Or if it was a face off, they ended up losing the face off. I mean, Matthews was pretty good off the draw, but mm-hmm. who else showed up for the Leafs? Um, Morgan Riley. Morgan yeah. Riley for sure showed up for the Leafs. Good goal. I mean,. He's he's the one that scored the goal. Um, my biggest concern, honest to God, is I don't think that was an interference call on Justin Hall. We played pylon right there and just got yeah. caught for bumping into the guy. Yeah, yeah, and that 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 would have been a goal for John Tavares, and it would have made the game two two in the end yeah. instead yeah. of them losing. Um, That's because we watched the game and initially. We were all uh, like. Like, Goaltender interference, like, where's the call there? Like, he doesn't even touch him, and all of a sudden it was Justin Hall. He stood still, and Anthony Straley bumped into him. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's not like Justin Hall purposely ran and just said, screw it, I'm going right at Anthony Straley. I'm going to clear, I'm going to deck him. He literally <laughs> tried to stop yeah. and get out of his way, and Anthony Straley just bumped him a little bit. Well, you can see, he doesn't even brace for a hit. He's literally just standing like a pylon. But even if that game went to 2-2, Toronto looked defeated. Defeated? No, Toronto looked better than Tampa Bay. In the third, though? Yeah. By the end of that match? No, Tampa was looking No, Tampa did not look at... Like, Toronto had all the momentum, I felt like. And if there was going to be a goal scored, it was going to be Toronto. Tampa going into the third. Yeah. Tampa adjusted defensively going into the third period. And that's like, all they needed to do is play shutdown yeah. hockey and you're not going to get this goal. You see the, in the second period, that Riley goal, how yeah. did that happen? Up the middle. Literally, it was, was it Matthews to Mariner to Riley or Mariner to Matthews to Matthew, Riley? Or Mariner to Matthews to Riley. But they were three wide and the puck really goes right across the middle and then Riley fires it in. The rest of the game, they couldn't even get close to doing something like that. Yeah. If there's a team that can switch it on and off again, it's Tampa Bay and... I was wrong, obviously. I was hoping for the Leafs. My prediction was right. I was hoping for the Leafs secretly, but, you know, it just doesn't work out. You can't root for the Leafs. Yeah, no. maybe I should put my heart aside if I really want to be a water boy for life. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, that wrapped up uh, what was an exciting series. Yeah. And oh, another sure. game seven. The Flames. Oh, my gosh. Well, we had five game just... sevens. Yeah, in the first but, round, it's insane. It's called a transition, Justin. We're going to get to this. <laughs> but the Flames, what, 134 shot attempts? And oh Jakey was just standing on his head the whole day. Yeah, no, Otten oh, was just a different breed of goaltending. <laughs> like, I saw memes everywhere on the internet after that game where it's just Ottinger digging a hole and then the rest of the Flames, like a construction crew, and Pete oh, Yaw just standing around watching them go. Just Dallas defense. Where were you at? Apart from in the net. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's, everyone's comparing him to a young Carey Price. Yeah. The way he looked in that game, and the whole series, let alone. And this season, and he's 23 years old, I think. Yeah, this kid's pretty young. Yeah. And he, I think he was drafted in the first round back in, like, 27th overall. Yeah. Yeah. So, this kid's, kid's got a lot of talent, to yeah. say the least. And I don't think Dallas, anyone was expecting Dallas to take Calgary to seven games. Mm-hmm. So... 
he to me was the MVP of the series, even though they lost. Oh, 100 percent. He's like, no Andre Vasilevsky quite yet, but I mean, for a guy that can keep their team in the game, he's right mm-hmm. up there. Yeah. So I mean, we talk about big players showing up that didn't show up for the Leafs, but Johnny Goudreau, Johnny Hockey. Showed up big time. Him oh. and Kachuk both had the exact same shot, just from different sides of the ice, yeah. right Kachuk, over the shoulder. Yeah. Kachuk wasn't like really good through games one through six, but game seven he just he showed up like he wanted to play. Oh, he yeah. snipe showed that goal in the second period, and then like I said, Goodrow was the exact same, just from the other side of the ice. Like yeah. they, you had to place it perfectly on Ottinger to beat him. Yeah, there's another way. Kachuk's one of the most versatile hockey players on that team, and that's what they need. No offense to. Luchik, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Kachuk could actually pot him in, throw some bombs. It was Johnny Hockey's first time ever wearing a letter. Yeah. And you guys didn't know that probably, but, like, it was his first time ever wearing a letter. He's never wore a letter before. This so season, like, in that game? No, ever. Like, the, ever. So he just got it for that game? Yeah, because, um, oh, I forget who Monahan. was out. No, not mine. And, um, someone, I forget who was out. Chris Tanev, maybe? Uh, was was out and he was wearing an A and then they made Johnny an alternate captain for. Do they have a C? No. I was gonna say no. Yeah, they I don't. can't think of someone on the team that wears a C. No, the they don't because uh, they didn't have one ever since Giordano left. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it it was quite a night for him and then afterwards Sean Monahan's on the R I or. Yeah, he's I-R-I. out for the whole year. That was bad. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, there, apparently he might be a chance if they make the finals, he can come back. Okay, no, I just heard, I mean, it's not like he did much before he was injured anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so, but there's a special moment between him and Johnny after the game, I don't know if you guys saw, he goes up and he, Sean's just like standing there, like right off the ice, and Johnny comes up and they give each other a bear hug. Oh, yeah. So, it was a nice moment. Good um, I know we had to preview it, but... Game seven was pretty intense in that one. I have to admit, I'm I'm happy the Flames pulled it out. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I don't think there was a disappointing game seven out of the NHL. <sighs> yeah, no, no. no but you know what? It was kind of disappointing to see the LA Kings not show up at all. Yeah, shut out by what is he like? Thirty eight year old Mike Smith. Oh no, forty year old. <laughs> forty year old Mike Smith. <laughs> Grandpa out there. Oh my god. Just stopping shots two, on that. Two nothing was the final score. Connor McDavid just took over the game. Um he basically willed the Edmonton Oilers to uh the second round. And yeah, there's nothing else to say other than McDavid's McDavid. He's he's back to his form. I know I said earlier this year that he probably did not look like McDavid ish. Even though he was still putting up good points, it just didn't seem like McDavid ish. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just didn't seem like he was really himself. The like, franchise guy, the MVP yeah, we're all expecting. Yeah, like, oh. it just wasn't him dominating games like we'd seen before. But. You got four other guys on the ice with you, and that's the biggest part of hockey is, yeah. you know, yeah. if he can't. Dish it off to Hopkins when he's up with him. You know, it's just, it's not going to no. come to fruition. And you got to yeah. think, too, the saying special players make special plays on special days. And game seven, Connor McDavid. Yep. What did he do? So, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about this series because, to be honest, it was probably the most boring series for me. But now you got a super excited series. You got the Battle of Berta in the playoffs. I'm pumped. Oh, yeah. Who do you think's taking this one? Calgary. Calgary. Calgary in six. Calgary in yeah, six. Yeah, I'm going yeah. Calgary in seven. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Like, oh, no 100%. Oh, yeah. And Colorado's, like, laughing at this because, you know, you're going to get the team that just got the shit kicked out of them, like, yeah, you're gonna seven get a times. Very <laughs> tired team. Yeah. Very tired team. So, I mean... It's going to be interesting to see what actually happens. I think the difference in this series is honestly going to be Calgary's top line. Yeah. They've been so productive all season long, and it's just going to be that way in the second round, I feel like. They got going in Game 7, 
I think they're just going to keep on rolling. Yeah, they got the cohesion, but you know what? I'm saying it. I'm going to be the odd duck here. Oilers in seven. Oilers in oh, seven. This one's going to game seven, though. I think it's going to game seven. This is not a series to be swept. The way the playoffs have gone so far, game seven would not be unwelcome. I think fans would just be jumping on the bench. If it was a game seven of a battle where I think there'd be a riot. Oh, yeah. I might buy a ticket and just go just to see this. (laughs) There might be a riot. Like, I feel like Edmonton fans and Calgary fans, that would would not go over. I, uh, I just think the way that the series went with Edmonton and L.A., you just you gotta see Calgary coming in on top. But LA team that wasn't expected to do much, let alone this season, but in the playoffs, pushed Edmonton to game seven. Mm-hmm. And like uh, they're aging and other than Kopitar and like Brown and Craig, They're a young team. They're yeah, yeah, exactly. They're developing yeah. and they still took the Oilers to game seven. So I think that was on the Oilers for not finishing that off quick like, more quick. That's a fair point. Yeah, yeah, so I just think when you put them up against Calgary, Calgary's a way more rounded team than the Kings are. I think they're gonna get Spooked. I think they're going to get ru- not run over, but definitely not. goaltending's in a big advantage. Yeah, I don't. Calgary Flames yeah, you're not going to see 40 year old Mike Smith coming in with a 938 save percentage like he did oh. in the LA series. Yeah. Oh, oh, he is. <laughs> I, I got faith in the old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet you do. Just like that Philly offense, eh? Oh, yeah. And speaking of Phillies, Hunter's Phillies, we got our first sponsor since Luck, who wasn't doing. Anything for us, by the way. <laughs> Hunter's Ale House, Factory Downtown, Beer Garden, and John Browns were gracious enough to sponsor the Water Boys podcast. So, first of all, thank you. Secondly, folks watching at home, VIP cards. Thursday is the day to get it. All you got to do, show up at the factory, pay cover, and then for the rest of the summer, you don't have to pay cover again. And on top of that, you get drink deals, you get meal deals. Folks, Hunter's is looking like McDonald's now with this value meal. <laughs> All you gotta do, show up at the factory, pay your 10 bucks for cover, get your VIP card, until midnight, that's the cutoff. Gotta be out early-ish. If you're under the age of 25, that's early. <laughs> but then, you're set for the summer. You're set for the year, actually. So, thank you again to Hunter's Ale House and all of their conglomerates. But back to Philly, which, that's the reason I was mainly stalling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't look up. No. Didn't look up. No. Well, James Harden was a no-show. Oh, but yeah. before we go to Philly, I just we have to talk about one thing about this New York-Pittsburgh series. The game-deciding goal in Game 7. Breadman could not see where he was shooting. Like, there's a, there's a replay of him shooting, and he, he can't see where the Nasty hell he's shooting. Going. But he found a lane, got oh, that third eye. Yeah, oh, he's, he's like, that's why they call him the bread man. Yeah, yeah but they're showing out big for him. Also, big. just, let's go New York. Hey, Pittsburgh, get Crosby and his old man out of there. And yeah, <clears throat> but I just, there, there's also a call going around that wasn't, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on the rule was, Left wing year in the third period, like ripped off Pedersen's Oh, the helmet. bucket guy. Yeah. 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 So Pedersen goes to the bench because he, that's what it says. That, um, if your helmet sure. falls off, you either have to go to the bench, but you or you can pick it up and put it back on. You just can't play with Ellis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he goes to the bench. Um, no call because left wing year ripped it off. Like. Yeah. So maybe expecting a call there on left wing year. Anyway, him going to the bench leads to the tying goal for the New York Rangers. Now, what's your guys' thoughts on that? Well, My thoughts are Lafreniere should have been going to the box. You see the replay, and the referee's not even looking at the scrum behind the net because the play's all out in front, and it's just exactly. Lafreniere and yeah. Pedersen behind the net, and that's when the whole, like, they just get tangled up. And, yeah, he takes his helmet yeah. off, but I think it was more so just, a, like, a scrambly kind of... They were tangled up. Players get a little fierce and they get tangled up. I don't think maybe he entirely meant to rip the bucket off, but it's just like the way the scramble ended up going between the two. And like I said, the ref just wasn't looking at it. So what can you do if you're not looking at it? You can't call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's hockey and that's a no call. Yeah. 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 So other than that, I think, what was what, what do you guys think of this Carolina, you know, New York series? I'm thinking New York in seven. I still like the Rangers too. Yeah, I, 
I think I was expecting Boston. So, I was expecting Boston too. You know, so changing the tides, it's definitely going to be interesting. I can't remember many games they played each other against each other this season. So I don't really know how they stack up, but I know that Carolina team all together, they're looking real good. That team that is series. deep. I'm not a. Uh, I'm just still not 100% sold yeah. on the Hurricanes. They're, I feel like they're still young, and they're going to be good for a long time to yeah, come. They didn't leave much doubt against Boston there. No, they, well, any game in TD Garden yeah. was the only game they lost. Any game at home ice, they yeah. killed the Bruins. Yeah, and they have home ice in this one, too. Yeah, so. I, uh, I think the Rangers are going to be a bit more tough, though. Shesterkin alone is quite an upgrade from Jeremy Swayman. <laughs> and uh, just, yeah, I just think. I'm not 100% sold on the Carolina team. I just don't think they have a... They're kind of like the East version of Calgary in a way. They don't have that solidified like mm-hmm. Matthews sniper. They just have a lot of really good players, which is honestly what yeah. a team needs. Yeah, just like I said, that's what a team needs. And yeah. That's why I'm taking David in this one versus Goliath. It's the Carolina for me. The last one we have to preview here before we go to the NBA is uh, the Battle of Swampland. <laughs> um, who's you guys got in this one? You know Panthers. What? Battle of Florida. I'm thinking Tampa. I'm yeah. going. I'm going Florida. Florida. Yeah. I, I just Florida. Florida looks like they're gonna get on a roll here. And, uh, if I'm Tampa, you don't have Braden Point for at least one game. It could be more. So I think Tampa or Tampa's in trouble here. Yeah, you know, you come off a series like that, and Justin, Taylor, I say it all the time. They got that heat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? We'll see. You carry a momentum like that into this next series, Tampa should have no problem mm-hmm. against Florida. We'll see. I think it's going seven games. Seven? I'm yeah. saying five. Five. Right. Tampa. Tampa and five. Ooh. That's interesting. I'm saying Florida and six. They're going to win it on the road in Tampa. Yeah. They're going to get redemption. Life. They're going to get redemption. Yeah, they're going to win it on the road in Tampa and six. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they they're gonna get redemption for what happened last year. Or was it last year or was it two years ago? I think it was last year. Um, where, yeah, it was last year where Tampa and Florida matched up in the first round, and Tampa won that yeah. in six. So I think Florida has got the redemption on their hands, and now we got to move to what we've been, what you've been dreading all day. Well, you know what? Philly didn't show, and... I thought they were going to win all their home games. Well, you know, they won the two that I said they were going to win. So, (laughs) that's what matters. They didn't get swept, though, did they, Justin? Exactly. Yeah, they didn't get swept, but you know what? James Harden, no show. He's washed. You can't give him the max extension this year. I, I wouldn't go as far to say as washed, but I do agree with the max. After a year like that, yeah, it's he, hard to he, give him that How can money. you commit to him that long when he's already like 30, I think 33 or something like that? 32. 32? Oh, yeah. I like my words here. You can't. No. Yeah, you no. can't. Like, you you sign him to a good one year, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but that's the thing, like you said, though. You get him a good one year, and then you still have some money left in free agency. You can get that... Exactly. Maybe not the biggest third name to bring in, yeah. but they need to bring in. But you already have a big third name. Tobias Harris. <laughs> that's a big name. Yeah. That's <laughs> a big name. Like, he averages 17 points a game. Like, I think they as, a third, yeah. as a third star, like, third third man, I guess. Like, that's what you want. Andrew Wiggins is averaging 17 points a game on the Warriors. I don't think he's bad. I just think that you already got Joel Embiid as a, your, like, go-to big guy. Yeah. You need someone to go beside James Harden or even a small forward. Like it, Tobias Harris just isn't going to get the attention he needs with Joel and B on your team. But you also got Maxi growing. That's and, true. Yeah, you and have... you got the development of him. I think he's he's going to take a, another step next year. But what you need is uh, that rookie of the year over in Toronto. Scotty, Scotty B. Barnes. You know the vibes. <laughs> yeah, he's uh. You're looking good. Yeah. Um, so I mean, other than that, who? Who really disappointed you guys in the second round of the NBA playoffs? Because I have one team that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. I know you're baiting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, let's get the Suns out of the way here. Oh, my gosh. CP3. I, Devin Book and I Aiden. saw it. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, the whole spot. At, at the Islanders game last night, in between the intermissions, uh, I saw a meme 
on Instagram. And let me tell you, it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> it said, Chris Paul, like, quote, unquote, he's like, man, I got a taste of the NBA Finals. Now I'm addicted to it. <laughs> and the, the caption said, congratulations to Chris Paul on overcoming his addiction. <laughs> <laughs> he will not be anywhere near the NBA Finals this year. Yeah. You know what, Chris Paul? You beat your addiction, and I beat anorexia. So, you know, <laughs> we got that going for us. I mean, just, I don't even know what to begin here because it's so disappointing. So oh, disappointing. Yeah. Like, yeah, you I, take them to a game seven, and then you just. Oh, they were up 2 0. They were up 2 0. Yeah. They were up 3 2 in the series, and then Luka Doncic just took over. Luka Magic. And. Yeah. I don't know, like, <laughs> it's funny to think, because Luca was asked during halftime, or after the game, if he uh, knew that he had as many points <laughs> at halftime as what the Suns did as the entire team, <laughs> and he said, oh yeah, I know. Well, like, what, it was like the first half, I think I looked and saw Devin Booker had three points, eight and a two, and Chris mm-hmm. Bob had one. Well, Weren't they leading by near 30? It was, more. it was oh, 52 it, yeah. 27 at half. Yeah, like correctly. it was bad. Like it was, it was like preseason NBA action, is what it felt like. Oh, yeah. In a Summer game league. seven. <laughs> yeah. In a game seven. Like, at home. These guys yes. did not show up whatsoever. Yeah. Like, at, Devin Booker finishes with 11 points. Like, it's either Luka Doncic just is like the goat in the making. That we're looking at, and that's a possibility. Or the Suns just fumble. Yeah. Um, you gotta give a shout out to Jason Kidd, though, to the head coach of the Mavericks. There's a video circling out there, and like I saw it on Instagram myself, of him literally standing up almost on the floor himself, co- like coaching his team through the defense. Whenever mm-hmm. the Suns run the attack, he's just out there. He's waving his arms, like saying "wait, wait, wait," and then the attack, and using all their like game terms. And but yeah, no, you gotta give a shout out to him for his like strong coaching yeah. and defensive game. Spencer Dinwiddie and uh, Luka Doncic are the first teammates to score thirty plus since Shaq and Kobe in a game seven. So you know, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Spencer and um, Luka are the new Shaq and Kobe, and James Harden and uh, Embiid Whoa. can. Never be mentioned to that comment ever again. If there's another worthy game seven, let's see how they do there. <laughs> yeah. I'll give it to Luca, but I don't know if Spencer Den when he's anywhere near yeah, Cody Bryant or shit. I think that's what that they, that's more on the opponent. I, I was, yeah. that was more of a dig at Harden and then yeah, yeah. that, that yeah. was that was not meant to be. Because who were Shaq and Kobe playing when they put yeah. up those numbers? Yeah. They yeah. were playing good competition and yeah. I I don't know. Like I think that looking forward, uh, I think the Warriors are just too too much for this Mavs team. Oh yeah, I, I really do. Like, what what does the Mavericks have to match up against all the talent? I guess like they just beat the number one team though, the Suns. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I got the Warriors, but what do you guys have? I got the Warriors here too, but uh, I think the series is going deep. This is a uh, least game six. Going deep, going deep. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game six series. Yeah. You know, you got two offense. You say Dallas doesn't have a powerhouse on offense, really, but other than you Luka. know, the whole team they're looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. They're putting up good numbers. Mm-hmm. So just like in hockey, you get five guys who know what they're doing out there, and they're going to compete against. Curry and those boys, and it's going to be a good series. And you know what? I'm taking Warriors, though. Warriors yeah. in six. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm thinking that it's going to be around the same. I'm going to say Warriors in five, actually. Okay. Um, I'll give them the gentleman's sweep. <laughs> uh, I think that the Warriors are just going to be too much to handle in this one. And I think that, you know, it's in terms of. What Dallas has to, you know, defend like how many players you had, Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, yep. Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, Otto Porter Jr. Um, 
J- who's the rookie Kaminga, um, Kevin Looney? Like these are players that are actually impact players for the Warriors. Yeah. So it's just a, the Warriors team is just deep, and that's something that I don't think the Mavs have. No, they only have. They're gonna build on this season. There's a lot of oh, good, bright spots in the NBA I mean, right now. Dallas. You saying that that makes sense because yeah, like. Before this season, they haven't won a playoff series since they won the championship back in 2011. And now they're in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, like, I think Luka took an even bigger step than he has yet. Mm-hmm. And there's Mark Cuban. He's going to take his, his money and his fan base, and he's going to go out there, and he's going to get a supporting cast for Luka that uh, we can oh, get along with. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, think, I think that's what's going to be yeah. the big key this offseason, getting yeah. Luka a supporting cast. Yeah, I think you're going to see yeah. Dallas making big jumps. I think Chicago, your Bulls there, I think they're going to make a few big jumps. Mm-hmm. And I think the Raps, got a, the Raps got another step on the gas pedal yet. Oh. Got so, and then Benny on the, the other league. side, yeah. you guys uh, were wrong again. I was right. Just have to say it. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Just facts. Like, if you ever want to go sports bet, like, just punch my name in and I can, or send me a DM and I can answer and give you the best advice you ever got. <laughs> All right, you're on the cool throne here. Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> the Bucks, they were a no-show in Game 7. Um, and I said Celtics from the start. Like, I don't know what you guys thought the the Celtics didn't have that the Bucks had. Uh, well, really, just hate. Yeah. <laughs> the Bucks were looking good. Yeah, and I sent it to Kumba. <laughs> if there was going to be one team to take out the Celtics, it was going to be the Bucks. And now Celtics got a pretty easy run to this final here. You think? I think. Wow, that's that's a good team in Boston. Yeah. I know that's it's a good, good team, team, but it's a good team in Miami too. No Kyle Lowry though, yeah, for at least game one. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, for me with that Boston series, and I think that we saw the matchup that we were expecting with Jason Tatum and KD, but it was Jason Tatum and uh, Giannis. Yeah. Like, both of those players, like, showed why they're the number one players on their team yeah. and why they're, like, top five or top ten players in the NBA. Yeah. That was a fun series to watch, though. Oh, yeah. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum just get along so Their chemistry so good, is yeah. so good. And this Boston team is, it's a dangerous team, folks. It's its dangerous. And I'm i am scared that they might beat Miami. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I think, me personally, I think Miami wins. Mm-hmm. But I think it does go game seven. And it's a coin flip, to be honest. Yeah, well, I'm switching sides now since they're out. <laughs> I'm jumping ship. What you a bandwagon. Oh, you know it. You know it. My catchphrase is heat, <laughs> but it's not Miami. <laughs> because they're going to get comfortable with a series that they should not be comfortable with winning. Mm-hmm. And they're going to get caught off guard by Boston. Game five, Boston's taking it. Yeah. I'll, okay. uh, I'll go one more. I'll do Celtics in six. I do think the Celtics are going to be the ones to take this series. I just I don't think Miami's ready for the... Well, it's fair. Yeah, and then I think on the west side, we're going... I think Golden State's going for their fourth championship in eight years. I think Golden State in six as well. Yep. No game sevens, two game sixes. So, I mean, we just have one more thing we have to let you guys know about before we turn this to Logan Gallant of the goody auto body Mariner Islanders. Um... How do you lose a game where you don't leave up a hit in <laughs> yeah. baseball? Yeah, it's a statistical anomaly. Yep. But yeah. walk, 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 walk mm. all day. Oh my gosh. What? Well, the Cincinnati Reds, folks, as we are going to fill you in here, they lost like the game against the Pittsburgh Pirates the other day. I think it was Sunday, was it? Yeah. Or yeah. was it? Yeah, okay. They lost the game without giving up a hit to the Cincinnati Red or to the Pittsburgh Pirates. One nothing. One nothing. Um, now, folks, this is pretty hard to do. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, if you bought a ticket to that game, <laughs> I'm sorry for you. <laughs> like I don't know if we have any Pittsburgh or Cincinnati people watching this, but oh my gosh, to a ten nine innings <laughs> and your team loses <laughs> one uh. nothing. <laughs> Uh, the Reds. Reds oh. had four hits, 
Pirates had zero. I think the Red Star pitcher threw like 116 pitches and no hit ball. That just walks, walks. I walks. mean, like I think this perfectly sums up the Red season. I think this perfectly sums up baseball. When you play enough <laughs> games, you get a statistical anomaly once this a month. The first time <laughs> since 2008 that a team has won with a recording a hit. Yeah. Yeah. We've had football scores that we talked about on here, what, 21-0, if yeah. you recall? Yeah. And then now we got a curling one, yeah. <laughs> one frame score. <laughs> I, like, I, don't know, I don't know what it is, but baseball is just... It's the most interesting sport where you can get the weirdest scores, oh, yeah. the weirdest stats, and it's just very interesting to see sometimes. I think since Bartolo Colon hit his home run, we just put <laughs> it in the twilight zone of baseball, yeah. where it's just oddity after oddity. Yeah. No offense to Colon, but you're not hitting that many homers. <laughs> <laughs> One's enough. It's a, oh, yeah, I remember watching him run the bases there. It took me about 45 seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I went to the fridge and got a snack and came back and just go around the third. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's a decently long time. You probably take five minutes in there, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I got this sandwich. It's called the Noah's Ark. It's two of every animal. You got two slices of turkey, two slices of pastrami, two slices of ham. And, you know, I got to throw in the pepper jack cheese, the mustard, the cupy mayo, 12 grain bread, toasted, obviously. Getting hungry. <laughs> then Bartolo <laughs> finally yeah. size in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, other than that, I think we have no. one uh, other thing. Yeah. The Islanders. Yeah, the, the Islanders. Islanders. I just forgot about that. Our Islanders, the Charlottetown Islanders. Looking great. Oh, I mean, big time. Coming off the sweep in Moncton. Is it setting up another one against the Titan? <laughs> sure. just pumping. The uh, Titan. They're pumping the Titan right now. Like, it's bad. Um, the only oh, thing man. that's going to. Like, I, my personal opinion, I don't think they're going to sweep. I think they're going to lose game three, and then they're going to win game four. Um, if if they do sweep, they do sweep, but I, I just think that Teton has to, they're going to come out fire. Yeah, you give them you give them two days off, which is something they desperately need for a very, very, well, very is, yeah. tired Teton team. And you give them home ice advantage, and I've been in Bathurst rink. It's not even as big as the East Link Center. The East Link Center ain't huge by any means. Yeah. But they can, even if that rink's not filled, they have the same kind of fans that we do at the East Link Center. They get loud no matter what number they are. So I think you give the Teton two days rest, you give them their home ice and their fans, it's going to be a loud build, and then it's it's not going to be an easy win for the it's Islanders not game one be or two was. What, yeah, game one no. or two was. I think it's going to be a, yeah. a really one goal game. I give it to them, though. In game two, the Teton really surprised me. That first period, they put up 14 shots on Frankie. I was not expecting that. They were tired in game one, and they come out with that energy in the first period of game two. Credit to them, but then they dropped off. Well, yeah, they their legs did catch up. It was oh, like yeah. Steve Irwin poking a bear. He's it's angry. <laughs> you know, it's just... That's why they came out hot, but man, that boy Drew Elliott were throwing bombs oh. up. <laughs> just hitting them all day. Get that one. boy back yeah. in the lineup, too. Yeah. And just... Well, did you see the stat after game one? Yeah. Boy and Elliott yeah. combined for more hits than the Teton team in hole. Yeah, that is frankly hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just seeing Drew Elliott, the bed boy, run around like wrecking balls, taking oh. people's heads off. <laughs> the energy in Drew Elliott now, though, he's back and he is hungry for playoff hockey. Oh, oh man, he got his helmet ripped off and a little scrummage the hair, and he was just firing off. <laughs> Drew <laughs> Elliott has school. the most energy I think I've seen in a hockey player in a long time. Just bounces off someone goes find yeah. someone else and it just hits them like it's three or four hits a shift him it's and like yeah Marty yeah. McSorley and Aquaman <laughs> yeah. it's it's very interesting uh, I I think that the Tita uh, definitely came out stronger like you said but they just fell off honestly like, it's uh, goaltending for me for Ickety you know who's it's just their goalie's committed to wa- sign to Washington and he's given up how many goals? I don't know if it's his defense or what, but he's not standing on his head. No. Yeah. He's six foot five. No, and he's but, giving up some highlight real goals. Let me tell you one thing that's really annoying me is uh, their big big guy that has been a no show in this series. He got one point last night. Hendrik Lapinier. Yeah. Lapinier. Yeah. Number ninety two. Yeah, yeah. Just 
first round draft pick to Washington, and it seems like Washington just wasted a first round draft pick. Uh, it seems like they wasted both their draft picks on yeah. these players. <laughs> no, to be fair to Lapier, he was he was really good in Washington for a young guy. Got his first NHL goal, but he came back to Ackley Bathurst and just I think instantly was just like I don't want to be here. I have a taste of the NHL. I just want to be up there. I don't mm. think he's got much interest in being in the queue, and like none of their big guns have really showed up. Honestly, if you're in the queue, that's your time to have fun. Exactly. I'm yeah. not telling these players what to do, but I am saying if you're in the queue and you were okay in Washington, even decent, fire off points, man. Like if Let's you don't want, your head. if you don't want to be here, and like that's fine. But what does it not piss you off to the point where you got sent down to the queue and you're like, all right, then I'm going to go off here and they're going to regret sending me down this yeah. year. Get angry. They're like, still scouting listen. you when you go yeah. down there. It's not like you're solidified to make the team yeah. next year. Washington is sending scouts to look at you and see how you're doing in the queue. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, by the looks of it, he might not even make the team next year. He didn't no. even make the world junior team. Yeah. And he was supposed to be like a captain on this team. Yeah, if you're an athlete, every day is a job right, job mm-hmm. interview, and he hasn't worn his tie in months. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's sad to see. Like, hopefully, he turns it around. Like, I I expect it more. Like, yeah. like more than just a sloppy assist, basically on a, you know, yeah. What was it? Late third period goal yeah. to make it five, five one. one. Yeah, I like, think Frankie was just bored inside of that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah like. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it's just... I get that he had seven yeah. points in three games in the Halifax series, yeah. but it's still, I, I can't I can't think that... Yeah. If you're not... If you're coming out here to Charlottetown and it's the second round of the playoffs, it he this needs team to step up. Yeah. He, Give, he really does. Yeah. Give the Tetons some credit, though, in that game, too. They scored a goal... For themselves this time. Yes, so in game one, in case you missed it, folks, we had a delayed penalty uh, third period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, delayed penalty third period. Little loose puck in the corner in the offensive zone for the Islanders. Delayed penalty. Frankie obviously gets pulled. And we'll pass up to the point. Just trickles on past the blue line, red line, blue line, and slowly goes into the goal. Frankie obviously upset. Oh, you know, right. I mean, you just you see that go in halfway to the yeah, bench. Had a shutout going yeah. too in that game too as yeah. well. So obviously, yeah, just yeah. Frankie reached out. We don't have we might have the clip. I don't know if we do have the clip. But Frankie reaches out. He tries to die for oh, it, but you could tell. The ice was not good at that point. No. He only stood oh, like 10 tough. feet. Yeah. And that yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I talked to Jim about it after the game there, too. And he said, he gave a little giggle. He's like, you know, I've seen it on highlights, but never in person. But I think Frank would be the first to tell you, we got the win, and that's all that matters. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he got the true shutout. Maybe not on the stat sheet, but he got a shutout. So, yeah. Shut to shutout. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a shutout. But, I mean, other than that, I think anything else you guys wanted to say before we send this to. Logan Glint of the Islanders, yeah, the baseball a, Islanders. Yeah, just a quick bit on Jan Bednar there for the Bathurst. For the season he had, he was one of the top goalies in the league, and I think I think he's a Detroit pick. Yeah, he's, he yeah, might yeah, be Red a Detroit prospect. Pick. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, for being one of the top goalies in the league and everyone looking at him in that way, he just hasn't. Not that he's had much of a team in front of him these first two games, but really the Islanders. Big two big second periods in games one and two, and that's all they needed to propel past them. Like they just, then there were nice shots too, but there was just Bednar didn't have it in him to keep them off the score sheet and keep his team in the game. He's also getting hackled by Charlton Islanders oh, fans. Oh, big time! <laughs> Good old Jeremy Davies there, shout out Jeremy there, the billet for Jakob Brabnich and Oliver Shatter. He was giving it to the other Czech guy. He wants more than that. Oh, yeah. all we can hear when we're in that zone is just. We can score shorthanded too. <laughs> it happened again. <laughs> Pull him out of the net. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, the whole I don't know section seven was going off of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they 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 absolutely love it. I I'm I'm loving just listening to him yeah. just yell at him all game long. Well, that's the whole East League Center. To be honest, we said it was going to be rocking, and 
It's a good time. Oh yeah, even Give me like, tickets. They're getting the ring hasn't sold out yet, but like I said, it's like the, with Bathers fans. The crowd we drew out the East Link Center, they're there, they're engaged, and they're behind their boys full. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But you know, Jeremy Davies is shouting about all a bunch, and like I said, his boys that he belts are checked too, so I think I think oh, they might have taught him a little something to share at the check net manager there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely been some behind the scenes stuff that has oh, been interesting. We had a source at the hotel, well, I'll name him here just for his protection, <laughs> but he was like, oh, what happened there, boys? I can't remember. Did you win or did you get pumped? Oh, that's right, you got pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Take it on a whole hockey team. But, uh, yeah, shout out to our unnamed source. You know who we are. <laughs> but no, this is this has been an exciting time for the Islanders hockey, for their fans, and I'm not a hundred percent confident in the sweep. I think it's very possible going into Bathurst with the way this team's playing. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't count the Teton in quite yet. I mean they yeah. came back from two oh last year, you can't count them out now. Yeah, no. I no. think uh, but I think this is a really strong Islander squad right now and I'd be very surprised to see the Teton get any more than one game. Mm-hmm. If, yeah. if they're lucky enough to take it to a game four, game five, yeah. it's Islanders. Yeah, I don't think the East Link Center is going to see another Islanders home game until round three. No. Wow. Yeah. Bold. Bold. No, no, I'm the same way. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is that bold. <laughs> he said it. I didn't say it. He, he, he said it. So, you know, if, if it's karma and it comes back, you, you get the blame. Gotta have some confidence in my squad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> blame comes back to Taylor, folks, if the Islanders choke this. So, <laughs> you pessimistic pansy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, speaking of Islanders, Logan Gallant coming at you right now. We're back with Logan Gallant, not only an assistant coach at Holland College Baseball, but catcher slash infielder for Goody's Auto Body Islanders. Logan, good to have you on the podcast. Thanks for having me, boys. Appreciate it. No problem. Your season's just about to start here in a week. What's the mood like for you guys? Uh, Pretty excited, not going to lie. We've been training now for, since January, we've been in the indoor soccer complex at Stratford every second week or so. Um, now we got on field there last week, which was kind of nice, a little change of scenery, actually put the, put the cleats on, put the turfs away for, <laughs> yeah. for a session. Um, and I think the first team practice there, official team practice on Tuesday kind of thing, get things rolling and, uh, get things ready for this weekend mm-hmm. off of St. John early Saturday morning. So yeah. How's yeah. the park looking now in Victoria there? I have, not going to lie, I've, I haven't been down there yet, but as far as I know, uh, City Trail Town Troy and his crew are working on it, getting it, getting things ready so that when we're back here on the 28th, mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be good to go and we'll be, we'll be set. Big double header that day? Always. Always. <laughs> so let's take it back here. Last season. Yep. Back in September, just coming <laughs> off of a championship. How did that one feel? It, I played a lot of sports in my career and I played in a lot of baseball teams, whether it's baseball, softball, any high school sport, whatever, I've never played in a team that was as close as this group of guys that we had, and it just, it it was an unbelievable experience, I I still, still smiling thinking about it today, like, it it was, it was pretty, it was pretty cool, and I mean, yeah, it's just, it's not just a senior baseball league, it's a pretty big deal in baseball in the Maritimes, like, I mean, this league's been going on now for so many years that it's, it's pretty sweet to see, it was pretty sweet to be a part of, I guess. And just with the team we had and how things kind of came together, especially with after dealing with all the COVID and be back in the league, be back playing in that um, with the teams against in New Brunswick and not just playing on, on the island and stuff, other guys. And it, yeah, it was, it was a truly amazing experience with only, a great group of guys. Only your second championship in franchise history. Yep. So it has to feel pretty good to get this championship back on the island. Are you guys, what do you have to do, you think, to defend it this year? <laughs> The Islanders have always been known for good quality pitching, and I mean, this year's no shortage of that. I mean, the Stevenson brothers, Jordan and JP, uh, our veteran and our, our leader, Jake Beck, uh, Brody McDonald's coming back to play this year. We got Tanner McLean, who had a outstanding year last year, Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyler Taylor, who pitched Game 5 in Moncton to seal the deal, and I mean, uh, potentially another guy or two along the way, and I mean, it... That's, that's always been our strong point, so I mean, if we can get, to, again, some timely hits like we were last year, things will be, things will be looking good, I think. Mm-hmm. So, you've made baseball your life. Yeah. When did the, your love for baseball start? Oh, geez, I think, I think my dad had a mitt on my hand when I was four years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but I, it was basically always baseball for me. Uh, hockey was more or less just a pastime just to get to baseball season, more or less. Play hockey in the winter, baseball in the summer. As soon as as soon as that provincial weekend for double A hockey finished up, it was all right. Let's bring yeah. the baseball glove out. Let's get in the gym or where are we going to throw the ball around or get some swings in before the season goes. So I mean, I've always been a big baseball fan. Always have been. Always will be. Don't think don't think that'll ever change. Yeah. So, so uh, you say that, but. What actually got you into the baseball? Was it watching MLB? Like, was it the Blue Jays? What actually got you into it? Back when I was a kid, I had a I had a coach that just was really good at teaching it and developing it. And uh, my idol growing up, I was always a defense defense first kind of mm-hmm. guy. And uh, I don't know if you guys know him, but John John McDonald used to be a utility guy for the Jays way back when. He he was my guy. He was the one guy I loved watching. Um, I always pride myself like. I want to make sure my defense, like my defense, is my priority. Because before I was a catcher, I was always a middle infielder, third baseman, kind of utility guy, which I, I still try to do now. But um, he was the guy I wanted to watch and wanted to be like, kind of thing. So that so, definitely plays a part. So when did you move to catcher? I more or less it, it was after Canada Games actually. Um, so I went to Canada Games in 2013. So I would have been in grade 11 in high school, and that's kind of where things switched over a little bit. I still played a little bit of second base, but I kind of transitioned more into a catcher first role mentality yeah. or catcher first mentality and then would still play the middle infielder, actually a corner too, so kind of thing. So Now, do you like staying behind the plate or do you more so like to move around and kind of just switch up the scenery? Personally, as long as I'm in the game, I, I don't, it doesn't matter where I am, <laughs> but yeah, I, I do like being behind the dish because being able to call the game and more or less see the whole field, be in every play, and just there's always something going on when you're as a catcher. I mean, there's there's always something else to think about. Um, but I, don't get me wrong, I don't mind don't mind giving the giving the legs a little bit of a break and playing third base for a game or sliding over to second. But I mean, I, I did play quite a bit of third base. I think last year um, with having Duncan uh, Pickett's a younger fellow. Uh, he's down in. Uh, Iowa right now he's he'll be back for opening weekend but I mean it was kind of nice being having having someone to split the time and give me a little bit of a break more or less yeah. but um, yeah so kind of like the QB almost aspect of it being in control yeah, of the game exact, exactly yeah. there's always always certain things going on and multiple different aspects of the game to kind of think about no now, or go ahead now you mentioned Canada games let's bring back core memory what comes out of that oh man there's there's so many of them. Um, the biggest one was you, you're basically treated like a professional athlete. Like I always tell kids now, um, as a coach, if you have a chance to go to Canada games, like you, you do what you can to get there. Like you take that opportunity, especially for being in a place like PEI where we don't have the population that an Ontario or a BC has where the opportunity to go is a lot yeah. better. Mm-hmm. And it like you're, you're treated so well and it's just it's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity that a lot of kids I don't some kids I don't think realize that it is and I mean we um, the baseball academy I'm a part of Atlantic Baseball Academy no free ads uh, <laughs> we, uh, we we train we trained the Canada Games team this winter that's going to Niagara this summer and it, it's same kind of thing I'll tell them the same thing it's there's so many I mean the food you the food you get you're bust every game um you're set up in ho- or in room in dorms and um, I guess the coolest part is like when we were at Canada Games there was a, like a rink or a, a spot where you get dressed mm-hmm. so we played at the old Sherbrooke Stadium so which would have been the AAA team um, for the old Expos mm-hmm. so we played that stadium so like having a locker room to go in and get drop your gear down yeah. hang up all your stuff in the stall and just stuff like that so that was that was probably one of my biggest memories yeah. or my like kind of being like wow like it's it's Pretty sweet. They really make Pretty you feel like game. a pro. Ex- yeah. Exactly, right? They're giving you kind of the whole experience. Yeah. They're going over above and beyond where like a, a national tournament or a yeah. selects where you wouldn't really have and kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned that you are a coach now. Yep. But before you were a coach and you still are a player for the Islanders, yep. but you played in Holland College. Yep. Now, what was your role on that team and was it successful, do you think, playing there for a couple of years or... Yeah, so Andrew McNevin, who's who I coach with, he's the head coach. Uh, he's been there since the program started in 2015. He kind of asked me a couple years ago to coach, but whenever I was playing there, um, again, it was more of a defensive first mindset. For the first year of the program, I mean, still feeling some things out and getting the kinks out. 
and whatnot. But then it came the second year of the program, and it was like went from not having an offensive role to it's like, yeah, we need you to take an offensive role. And I mean, and I didn't, I didn't even catch first year of Holland mm-hmm. College. I played third base. I started at th- started at third base majority of the games, and then we had a guy go down. We had one of our middle guys go down. So our second baseman shifted over to short. I would shift over, play a game at second, hop back over to third, and it was it was it was kind of it was interesting the way it worked. But and then second year it was kind of oh I play a bigger role and get plugged in more offensively more or less. So now in college we always hear the horror stories like D three baseball in the <laughs> states of like just atrocious fields, you know, <laughs> atrocious economies, you know, just what was your just like oh my gosh moment of playing for Holland College, <laughs> whether that be on the road or just like a certain Oh, uh, playing in Cape Breton was interesting. Uh, <laughs> so? their, their, just their coach and their program didn't take it really as seriously as everyone else, I guess. It was more or less a joke to some of them, but I mean, other than that, for the most part, that league, is, it's, came along, it's come a long way and there's a lot of good ball players in that league now where a lot of the Atlantic guys, um, if they don't want to go away for school or they don't want to go down to the states. They just hop back. They just, there's yeah. multiple different places to play. Where one, you're still getting a good education, exactly. right? And that's and that's the goal in any any post secondary, right? I mean, as a, as our athletic director always says, you're an athlete first, right? Or a, not sorry, <laughs> sorry let, me, let me rephrase that. You're a student. You're a student first, right? Yeah. So I mean, being able to do that, but at the same time, being able to play ball. And I mean, Holland College does such a good job where they treat you. They treat you extremely well, and they continue to do so moving forward. So the program itself, though, is pretty elite for baseball. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good year in year out. Yeah, and can you speak to that success? Just I think after the first few years of the program, um, just kind of getting the name out there. I mean, our second year of the program, we ended up coming, we ended up losing to McGill University second year in Fredericton at nationals. And I mean, if you if you go look at that roster from McGill. I mean, a lot of those guys are D2, D1, like JUCO guys, like that come up to finish their schooling. Mm-hmm. They basically bring them up to finish them up. And anyways, <laughs> we lost, I, I'll never forget, we lost them 3-2 in the round robin, in the round robin when we played them off a of Bach. We had two outs in, I think, the sixth inning, bottom of the sixth inning, and they scored the third run off a of Bach. And then in the championship game, we played in probably the worst weather I've ever played in. I, I, I remember going for a pop-up and I went to go get up and I couldn't get my right foot. <laughs> I couldn't, like, I couldn't move it. Was I was just stuck in the mud? Yeah, there was like a good two inches worth of mud <laughs> stuck. It was, it was so bad. Like our center fielder went for a ball. Actually, our center fielder is, Nat, is Taylor Larkin play, who plays with us in the, on the Islanders and he went for a ball and I'll never forget. Porte, he just he wiped out. It just it was so oh. slick in the outfield. And he went for you first, but it was like it was scary because at the same time he didn't know how, like if you were gonna get hurt, like what was gonna happen. If the ball was gonna hit you almost. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> exactly, and I mean we only lost four one, but it's like take that on a nice day. Like we, yeah, we yeah. still gave him a yeah. run. We still could have gave him a run. Like yeah, yeah. and I mean I, I looked at our starting our, our starting lineup that day. We had nine guys were from the island, and we had one guy from New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. So I mean. Just goes to show the quality of ball we do have here in the Maritimes, yeah. and not just PEI, but in the Maritimes as a whole. Yeah. So, of all that traveling on a sadder topic, you're traveling as a type one diabetic. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about those struggles. <laughs> it's it's interesting. Um, I mean, but that being said, it's it's 19 years and counting. So, I mean, it's something I've grown up with since I was six years old, and I mean, it it's one of those things that I've kind of adjusted to, and it's it's just another part of the routine. I mean, before a game, check the sugars, make sure they're all right. If they're good, away you go. A little low, yeah, get a get a little bit of Gatorade into me. A little high, give myself a little bit of insulin, and it's it's just a, it's just a part of the routine now. Do you like? Have you ever had to stop during a game just to get a snack or something? You guys will you guys will like this one. So, <laughs> in, in 2017, I went to Canada Games for softball, and softball runs a little differently from baseball, where. It's, you play every province, mm-hmm. and you play every team once, but you play doubleheaders every day. Okay. So the first day we got there, it was like, the whole week we were there, it was like 38 to 40 with no wind. So it was like dead heat, like it was, you couldn't keep yourself hydrated, it was so bad. But anyway, so we got there, and 
since the games were so squeezed in, like we only had now, I think the first day we had an hour and a half, the second day we had a half hour or an hour. And so basically we had to fill out, okay, what do you want as a box lunch where they'll deliver the, your lunch to you so you don't have to go spend X yeah. amount at the canteen or get greasy deep fried food. So the first day we had, I think we might have had two hours actually, now I think about it. And the food did come, they forgot about it. So our chefs luckily were there. They quickly ran to Subway, which was I think five or 10 minutes away, picked us all up subs. So we at least had enough and we at least had a little bit of time to digest it. So that was fine. Um, and again, thinking I'm diabetic here, right? So it's like trying to make sure like I need to have something in my system. I can't go on an empty stomach. Um, so that was fine. Second day, same thing. No box lunch. And like, don't get me wrong. Like I have, I always pack, like I always have granola bars in my bag yeah. or yeah. something along those lines. Worst something, case scenario. Exactly. Right. But like not something you want to have as a meal no, in between no. a game. Right. So yeah, we didn't have time. And I wasn't, I was like, no, it's too warm. I'm not eating, like, I'm not eating any grease. Like, I'm not eating any of this, any of that. So anyways, I had, all I have is granola, I think I had a granola bar. And remember, we're in 38 to 40 degree yeah. weather. So our second game was against New Brunswick. And I remember, I think I, I think I was sitting in the five hole, might have been four, four or five hole, whatever. So anyways, I get up to play, or get up to bat the first inning. I hit a double off, double off the wall. And I get into second base and kind of just sit there or kind of sit there hands on my, on my knees and I'm just kind of like I really don't feel good <laughs> and my buddy on New Brunswick was playing short and he's like you alright? I was like I think I'm going to be sick so sure enough I scored like the next play and I went into the dugout and the dugout had like a gate to exit out the back mm -hmm. as soon as I got in the dugout I bolted for the door and just I, there was nothing to come out, but I was just, I was sick. Mm. And so sure enough, that happened twice. It happened twice in the matter of three innings. And then finally in the fourth inning, I, when my sugar started to really drop, my coach, we were, I think we were up like 11-1 or something, but we were, we were winning big. Like the game was going to be over after five, but my mom and dad were there. Mom went, to, mom ended up going to the canteen. She grabbed a Powerade and a Snickers bar. Coach come, not, no word of a liar. Head coach comes out of the dugout. Time comes out and we're, and we're all kind of like, what's going on? And catcher comes out and all the infield all comes in like, what's going on? And he comes out with the Gatorade Snickers. She's like, the umpire kind of followed him. He's like, what's going on? Oh, this isn't a, this isn't a mound visit. This is just for a shortstop. He's a diabetic. So I'm on the, I'm on the mound scoffing or up, we're just standing around the mound. <laughs> I'm having a Snicker bar just to, just to get my sugars up, and it's like I felt so bad and I felt so foolish, but at the same time, it's just it. That's that's yeah. I have to do what I have to do, done, right? You're a walking so, guy for Snickers. I'm, I'm telling you, like, I, <laughs> you ate yourself when you hungry. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right? But, uh, but yeah, it, it's that. But like I not knock on wood, I haven't had any scares where it's been really bad. So I mean. It's kind of nice that way, mm -hmm. and I like to think I have a good control over it, and I know, like I know how my body works and feels and stuff. So, mm -hmm. knock on wood, that hopefully this season goes smoothly again. Mm -hmm. so. And you also got to meet former Humboldt Bronco player who's yeah. also a diabetic. Yep, you know Ka Caleb. Yeah, he's a, and I, I still talk to Caleb every now and then. Um, he's tra he's with him traveling and stuff, and he's great to talk to and stuff like that. And I mean, reading his book and like, it's what he's went through is crazy like it, it's not something I could ever I'd ever wish upon anybody it's but it's uh yeah he's a he's a great dude now how did you actually get to meet him uh whenever he was in Summerside doing his um tour or he came to Summerside for a couple shows and um ended up getting tickets to that so I got to finally meet him and talk to him afterwards he was doing kind of a signing mm -hmm. or whatnot of his book and stuff so but yeah so it was pretty cool Pretty yeah. cool mo moment for you. Yeah, is for there, sure. Is there a touring partnership in the works? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you too? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I stay pretty close to home for the most part. So, but uh, but yeah, no, he's uh, he's doing he's doing great things. Well, yeah, no, that'd be a guy who'd have plenty of stories and like, oh, plenty man. of wisdom almost to impair you. Well, to exactly right. I mean, play junior high hockey. I mean, the his travel would be a lot more hard on his body than it would. Yeah. Than, I mean. Senior league, at least it's only Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. Saturdays with the odd Sunday and Wednesday involved, so yeah. so it's not too too bad. But uh, but yeah, so you guys start your season next week. Yes. What 
is your role on the team, let's say, right now? Like, you're a coach for Holland, so do you ever, like, when you're on the field playing, do you ever, like, get the coach mind in your head and you're like... In my, in my mind, I'm always coaching. <laughs> like, it, but that being said, I'm all, or I'm, I shouldn't say I'm always coaching. I'm always thinking like, I always feel like I'm thinking like a coach. Um, just trying to think of different scenarios. And that, I mean, that's, that can be a good thing, but it also can be a bad thing where trying to slow the game too, too much, uh, it kind of can come back to haunt you where at, at the same time, there's times where I'll sit back and think it's like, okay, I gotta, gotta relax. I gotta start think. I guess think less, just do it. Let myself have a little bit of fun. Yeah. kind of thing because if you start thinking too much and thinking like a coach it's that's when things get too slow and not as much fun as just letting the game mm-hmm. come to you and letting things happen more or less and baseball is one of the few sports with a statistical error you yeah. can actually have a stat for an airline so yeah. what do you do to avoid thinking about those errors you don't <laughs> <laughs> try to find a way to cope with them I guess yeah. it's probably the easiest way what's your coping mechanism then for me oh nothing just Try and okay, deep breath, deep breath. Think about something else. Try and look, look in the stands. Talk to someone on the bench. Just try to take my mind off the game yeah. for, for a second, more or less. But I mean, when I'm in game mode, I mean it's usually pretty locked and loaded and just ready to go. So we, did, even though you won a championship last year and the season starts here in a week, we looked up some stats. They might be wrong and you might have to <laughs> practice. But you guys only hit two home runs as a team. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Is that something you guys are looking to improve on this year? Or like, I mean, we definitely added a couple guy. We definitely added another guy that can that can hit a hit a ball out of the ballpark. Uh, Nick balls. Nick McPhail. He played he played uh, back in twenty nineteen when we first come back into the league. Uh, and I mean, there's a couple guys like Josh Myers coming home from the states. And I mean, Duncan Pickett's hit four four last year or not last year uh, this fall or spring. Sorry, this spring down in. At school, so I mean, there's definitely there's definitely some pop in the lineup. I mean, Grant Grady, another guy that can lose a baseball at any time and whatnot. So I mean, I definitely think there there'll be a few more. I think as, now that we're a little more comfortable this year. But I mean, at the same time, we're we've never been a big hitting team. The Islanders, like I said earlier, the Islanders are a pitching based mm-hmm. defense. So I mean, if we can get a few timely hits and play solid defense, and our pitching pitches the way we know they're going to, as long as we can. As long as we can get enough runs across the board to kind of let our pitchers do the work, yeah. I think I think that's our that's play some goal. smart small ball kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're always trying to do whatever you can to scratch a couple runs across the board. Yeah, you keep on saying run a couple runs across the board. What do you think the magic number is to give you guys your pitchers the opportunity to win? The game? <laughs> well, that's hard to say. I mean, we've won we've, <laughs> for the two years I've played. We've won a lot of one nothing ball games or two one ball games. So I mean. Our pitchers are pretty good at holding holding opposing teams accountable. I mean, um, well, just look at Tanner McLean and Jordan Stevens and JP and Jake Beck in playoffs last year, right? I mean, it at that first series between those guys and Jay Johnson. I mean, that there was a lot of one that like, well, we won the champ, we won Game Seven against St. John two nothing. Like Game One was one nothing. Like it was very. Very low scoring games, and I mean the league's always been fairly low scoring for the most part. I think because of the imports and the pitchers that they bring in. Like these these guys are well brought up pitchers, like coming out of coming fresh out of college for the most part. Mm-hmm. So I mean they're they're throwing they throw the ball hard. They got good off speed. So I mean it's they make things tough for hitters. Where I mean it's it's it can be difficult. Yeah. So now as Justin mentioned before the podcast started there. You have spent some time on the mound yourself. <laughs> yeah, a little bit every now and then. Can you tell us some of the nasty stuff you might be throwing out <laughs> of the plate? Just a fastball slider with a changeup. Nothing, nothing too, nothing too crazy. It's not gonna blow, not gonna blow up by anyone. You just don't want to confuse your catcher when you're on the mound. That's it. Yeah, right? no, uh, yeah. Exactly. yeah, that's, yeah, that's digits. <laughs> not too many signs to remember. Anything, no, you know. no, more, more or less, just I, more or less, I'll pitch if more or less needed. Take a few innings off for some of her, some of her main guys for sure. You can hit the so. plate though. Oh yeah, I like oh, to throw. Yeah. I can throw strikes. There we go. Yeah. I, should, I should have done it. Not come what I hope. <laughs> you're just throwing gas out there. So, ah. so your team, uh, well, you guys won the championship. Now, what was the fan support like during last year and after you won the championship? And what are you looking forward to this year about the fans? Our, the the fan the fan support we received last year was phenomenal. I mean, seeing Victoria Park in 
the first series against St. John and then the finals against Moncton. Like, it, it, I've, ne- I've never seen that place so packed. I mean, there was so many fans we had there that, and there were so many people that were messaging saying, do you play tonight, um, coming to watch tonight. And I mean, there's family members, friends, like everybody, I think, started to follow it. But I mean, and that's kind of the beauty about PEI, right? I mean, and just look at the caps, right? I mean, it, if you win, people love a winner, mm-hmm. and, right? And I mean, the more the more we started winning, like the more it seemed like the more people that started following. And I mean, I, what was it? Game four, game four against Moncton. It like I remember looking out, and it was just like every part of Victoria Park there was there was people. Like I mean, looking to the left where people usually sit in their lawn chairs, like the bleachers were full and. People, there was people down the right field line, the left field line, the left field fence, center, like right center, right field. Like it was, it was unbelievable. And it was just kind of cool to look and it's like, all right, like people are actually, like people are buying in. And I mean, that's, and that's kind of what we did as a team. We bought in and I mean, having that fan sport behind it just kind of helped add a little fuel to the fire. Just have to say this because like, you know, not an Islander. <laughs> <laughs> From my time here, you know, it just it seems kind of like, you know. Islanders or like island people, they like be the careful. Band. <laughs> they like the bandwagon when they're teams. They <laughs> weren't careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if you guys were losing, would you guys see the support that you had? Like, even with the Caps, when the finals happened, there was a lot more fans than the regular season. Like, yeah. you know it, I mean? it's hard to say. I mean, there's the baseball community on PEI is fairly big, so I mean, I think even if we're not as good as we think we are I mean if this, to be yeah there. if things aren't going our way I still I still do think we get the support just because like I said the the league in general the New Brunswick Senior League has been one of those leagues where it's developed a lot of baseball players over the years and there's been a lot of good baseball players playing that league over the years where I think that it, it's you still go to Mon- you, same thing when you still go to Moncton you get seven eight hundred fans a night on a Sunday night at mm-hmm. 7 30 right like every every team's got their main followers and I mean you're going to gather a few and lose a few every year I still think that people will support us depend, no matter what happens, yeah. more or less. And to be fair, there's bandwagoners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Us Islanders, we like our sports. Just look at Fizz and the Leafs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There wasn't a sold out crowd at all during the regular season there. Yeah, speaking of dog in the major leagues, yeah. you've got a problem with the Yankees. Uh, Would you care to vent to the folks here? No, I'm good. I'll keep my Yankees coming. <laughs> I'll keep my Yankees coming. Well, oh, actually, oh, I'll bring one up for you. Uh, I'll quote you directly here. <laughs> Easy to hit homers when you play in a sandbox. Yeah, I don't like Yankee Stadium. <laughs> that's, that's, I, as much as I want to go to Yankee Stadium someday, it's not it's not a ballpark I like. I mean, okay. but I, I mean every every park's got something, right? I mean, the Fenway's got the same thing. They got a short they got a short pole no, down right field line. So I mean, it's, and then you got the big monster on the other exactly. side. Yeah, is, it, is that something that like as a baseball player, it kind of pisses you off that like there's no regulation for a ballpark and outfield to be the same size at each ballpark. You know what I mean? Not overly. I mean, everybody's going to be different. I mean, if you're going into the same spot, everyone, what, what's the fun in that? Everyone, everything's got to be unique, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Milwaukee whenever and someone hits a home run and goes down the water slide. Yeah. Right? I mean, everybody's got everybody's got a unique little part of this yeah. thing. I mean, Wrigley has someone special singing, taking it to the ball game after oh. uh, each each game kind of thing. So I mean, it's it's everybody's got their unique yeah. thing. I mean, the Jays got t- Looney Tuesdays or whatever for yeah. hot dogs. So, I mean, everybody's got something, right? Yeah, like so, you said, too, it's about that unique pair, Exactly. Because they're exactly. trying to make baseball fun again. That's been exactly. the thing the last few years is wow. make baseball fun again. Exactly. Even though it's already pretty fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it's, it's, the, I, I think sports in general right now, is they're in good hands. Like, I mean, yeah. you're seeing all these veterans that we grew up with, like the LeBrons and... Um, what am I looking for in baseball? Like, a Rob, take Robbie Cannell, for example. Robbie yeah. Cannell was big whenever... 10 years ago and definitely not as big now no. but now we got the Trouts and no Tani's and Tatis and Vladdy and guys like that right? and people so. like some personality exactly. too. it makes, it makes exactly. them like laugh and smile exactly. and get attached exactly. to the game yeah. it's definitely a young man's game in any sport we've oh, seen across 100%. the board 100% like NHL basketball NFL like For these sure. four major yeah. sports in baseball exactly. exactly it's all the young guys yeah. so this season what are the oddities what are the unique big uniquenesses that you're looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to being back on the road. Like get it's nothing there's nothing better than having having fun going on a road trip and going off to St. John opening weekend and hopefully getting a couple W's, having a having a good time on the way back and away we go, right? So I mean the road trips are definitely fun. Um, 
just and playing at home's fun too. I mean, when seeing like a big crowd, hopefully on the twenty eighth we get a big crowd out, and mm-hmm. I think that's I think it, it's just nice playing in front of fans again and playing some meaningful meaningful baseball again. I mean, it's a long winter. I mean, yeah. my flames are still in, so I, thankfully, <laughs> so flames are still in, so I still got that going for me. But I mean, baseball season's back, and I'm, I'm looking forward to just being able to play and play again. Talking about this season coming here, you mentioned you played Moncton in the finals last year. Yeah. Yeah. So is that going to be like the rivalry for this season? Yeah, protect the bridge, or who's who's going to be the rivals now this season? I don't. I don't know. I mean, Freddie, Freddie, and Chatham are both back in it. So I mean, I I know a few guys on both teams and. From what I heard, I mean, it sounds like they're both. It's going to be a pretty competitive league again. I mean, we know what St. John has. We know what Moncton's got. Moncton brought in the import. Like everyone, everyone's got an import. We, that's one thing we didn't do. All right, we kind of made an agree. We kind of agreed on it, but we're just not going to take an import this year. And it was more or less kind of mutually agreed upon. We have our team. We have. We know what we want. We know what we want to go get. So it's kind of like we're just going to hold off. Away we go. See how things. See how things play out. I mean, and like I said, I think we we have a good team. We added we added some good pieces in the off season, and I think we're it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a fun year. But I mean, I think that's the, but the biggest thing is this the, this is a family. Like we're 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 one big family where we we all buy in and we we still we still all have a good time together in the off season, right? Like there wasn't there wasn't too we had a, we had a freaking Christmas party, like it was it was one of those things, right? We're pretty we're, we're pretty tight knit group, so I mean that and I think that goes a long way. And I mean, I said it I said it last year, and I'll say it I'll say it again this year. I mean. It's not necessarily the team with the most talent that wins. It's the best team, and I mean, not a team's not just full of talent. A team's filled with guys that buy in together. And I mean, it's chemistry. Exactly, yeah. the chemistry aspect is so huge, and I mean, especially in baseball, right? I mean, if you have that extra, if you have that chemistry aspect, I think it go. I, in my opinion, it goes a long way. It's not a one man game. That's no, for sure. You guys, exactly. you gotta be bonded. Exactly. Yeah. One thing that we've noticed is changing this year compared to last year is the games, the amount of games you're gonna play this year. Yeah. Is that something that you guys are like worried about with the like schedule I think, length? I think it might play into our hands a little bit. I think we have a lot of pitching, which definitely helps. Um, but I mean, the other thing is too is it, it's it's tough. I mean, you know, you're not going to get everyone there every game of the season. I mean, it's guys are going to miss games. Like, there's weddings, there's family stuff, there's trips, like, that, and that happens, right? Like, no one wants to waste, no one's going to waste their whole summer just... There's there's life. Right, there's there's yeah. still life involved, yeah. but at the same time, we know we all know we have a job to do. Our one job this year is, okay, first things first, we're going to go to nationals, we're going to try and compete, and we're going to try and go out and get a gold medal. That's our, that's goal number one. I mean, after that, once nationals is over, it's, okay, time to kick it back in gear, okay, but well now we got another New Brunswick championship to go after kind of thing. So, I mean, just see how the season plays out, I mean... Try and keep everyone healthy is definitely a main thing. Try not to overuse guys too early in the season. Um, I definitely think, but like I said, I definitely think we're really deep on the mound, so I think that's going to be a big strength. And I mean, I think it'll definitely help in the length mm-hmm. of the season, but I think it, the length of the season is also nice too because it's and you're not playing the same three teams every time, so that's yeah. kind of nice yeah. having those two extra teams to mix in there too. Oh, so. now these these big double headers, are you a fan of those, or could you go with? Uh, Honestly, I, I've always enjoyed double headers. They're, yeah. they're kind of nice. The more ball, the better, kind of thing. Yeah, Plus exactly. Get Snickers breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I do enjoy I do enjoy the double headers. I think the double I think playing two games is a lot easier for us, and I mean helps us with costs too, right? Yeah. I mean instead of us having to go play one game in chat, I'm like that's kind of with the boss and the bridge and yeah. stuff like that. It's not, it, it's not cheap, right? So well, yeah, there's a reason in the majors they go for three and four games. Exactly. They right? for one you don't game. want to be just traveling back and forth when you're playing that many games in a so, season. So yeah, it's, it's kind of nice in that regard. Yeah. So. Well, we wish you the best this season. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll talk to hopefully you and a few more of your teammates this summer to come. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That sounds great. We'll, we'll have you back on when you guys win the championship yeah. again this yeah. year. Deal. <laughs> Or, yeah. gold, or the gold medal. Yeah, for sure. Just one quick thing. Yeah, one line for us that's going to hype up this season. Oh, jeez, put me on the spot. <laughs> I don't know. Um, go, go, just go, Isles, go. Go, Isles, go. Isles, go. go. Yeah. There we go, so. folks. Go, Yard. Yeah. <laughs> go, Yard. Yeah. Just like that uh, LSU pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> that classic I- interview. Yeah. Islanders, fire off the fans at Justin. Justin. You want to defend yourself and tell the folks where to find us? Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Fish Water Boys Podcast, and on Twitter, Water Boys Podcast, and on Facebook as well. And then you can also go check us out on Water Boys Media on Instagram because we'll be following games like the Islanders this summer. 
and every other sport on the island as well. We just went to a senior men's football game this past weekend, so we're going to everything, folks. And other than that, you can like on YouTube for this video and look, subscribe as well. And you can also like and follow along on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And other than that, Grant, send them out, buddy. Oh, you know I will, buddy.